Have you ever found yourself tightly coupling all the objects and systems together while developing your Unity game, feeling like every new feature is a battle against your own creation? You're not alone. Today we're diving into a game-changing concept that's not just for the coding elite. In the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to walk through creating your own lightweight dependency injection framework. We're going to do this by using attributes. First, we're going to provide all the dependencies and then inject them all as needed. Let's get started. I've started a mono behavior here called injector, and it will contain all the code necessary for finding and then satisfying dependencies. Just above that class, we'll define both of our attributes. The first one will be the inject attribute, and we want it to work on all fields and methods that are marked with the attribute. The other one we'll call provide, and provide we're just going to set up on methods for now. With that out of the way, let's set up a few classes that we can use just as example usages, and we can use them for testing. So I'll make two of them, class A and class B. Both of these are going to require some dependencies. I'm also going to create a marker interface. A marker interface has no methods. It's only used to identify a type. In this case, we're going to want to know which classes in our system actually provide dependencies. And I'm going to make one more class. We'll just call it provider. The provider is going to supply these dependencies to the injection system. In the system we're building today, all providers will be mono behaviors, and you can have more than one of them. And a provider can supply as many services as you want, including supplying itself as a reference. So let's have a look at how you would do such a thing. I'll just define a couple dummy services here. They won't do much except output a little bit of text maybe. We can have a default message of null, but we could output service A dot initialize method ran and with some message. And we can make a similar service B. And we could also supply a factory as a dependency. The factory could cache a version of a service and only create it the first time. That way you're not creating a new service every time you're fulfilling a dependency. You're always going to get the same one. So now our provider can use the provide attribute to mark methods that will return particular types. So we can have a provide service A, provide service B, and provide factory A. And now we're supplying our dependencies. How do we inject them? Let's come over to one of the classes and use our inject attribute. First, let's create a field to hold our service A. We'll mark a method with the inject attribute that accepts the service A and assigns it into that field. Let's jump over to class B. In class B, let's get all of the things that we just defined. So we'll get a service A with a field injection, service B with field injection, and let's get our factory using method injection. Just for variety's sake, it doesn't really matter if you use field injection or method injection in these examples. We're going to allow for both in our system. So let's recap the system so far. Any method marked with the provide attribute, we expect to supply an instance of a dependency. Any field or method marked with the inject attribute can expect to have that dependency satisfied by our system. So now that we have a clear understanding of what we're going to create, let's go back to our injector class. We're going to be using reflection to find all these things. So first of all, I'm going to define a constant for our binding flags. We're going to be looking for public, non-public, and instance methods and fields. The first order of business is going to be to find all of these dependencies. And once we've found them, we can just store them in a dictionary by type. I'm also going to change this injector to be a singleton. Now, I've already got a generic singleton that I like to use. I'll put it up on the screen here quickly. Really, the only important thing here is that I only want to have one injector. So. Now, making it a singleton isn't strictly necessary, but it certainly would help you debugging things if you only had one of them. So the first thing we really want to do in here is find every single module that implements our interface, our marker interface. So first, let's create a helper method that will simply return us all of the mono behaviors in our scene. New find objects by type method actually takes a sorting mode. I'm just going to use instance ID. It's not really critical. So let's make use of this helper method. We'll find all of the mono behaviors that are actually of the type we're looking for, which is iDependency provider. So with all of those in an array, we can now loop over them and we can register each one of them into our dictionary. We might as well do that in a separate method. Let's call it register provider. So we know that every iDependency provider that gets passed into our register provider method more than likely has a method inside that is annotated with the provide attribute. Let's store all the methods that are inside this class into a variable and we'll loop over it. And what we're going to do is find those particular methods that are marked with this provide attribute. Let's say if it's not marked with the attribute, we just want to continue and go to the next iteration. So we can say if it's not defined, then continue. 
However, if it was, let's get the return type of the method and let's actually invoke it. We'll get an instance of whatever it was supposed to provide and we'll put that instance into our dictionary so we can use it for the injection later. So we can just say, if it's not null, add it to the registry. Otherwise, our provider has not supplied what we expect. We should throw an exception. I think we could probably test this out at this point and make sure that all our dependencies are getting registered. Let's add a debug statement just so we can see it in the console and then we'll jump back into Unity and try it out. I'll just have a quick look at the provider again. So we're expecting to register two services and a factory. Okay, let's go try it out. So because these are mono behaviors, we need to create an empty game object and put them on there. Now, while we only want to have one injector class, we can have as many providers as we want. And in this case, we've only made one so far, and we might as well put it on the same game object. I've recompiled. I'm going to press play, and let's check out the console. So there we go. We registered service A, service B, and factory A from the provider class. So that's perfect. Exactly what we expect. Let's carry on. So back in our injector class, right where we found and registered all of our dependencies, Let's now work on field injection. I'll start by creating a helper method that will return true or false if a mono behavior contains any members that have been marked with the inject attribute. So we can just say object get type get members using the binding flags. So again, we can use our attribute is defined method and we can pass in this time the type of inject attribute. So that will return true or false. We can now use that in a link statement and we'll chain that together with our find mono behaviors where is injectable. Let's iterate over this collection and try to inject into each of these classes. So inject will be its own method here that will handle all of our specific injection. First of all, let's store the type of this object into its own variable. We're going to use that in a moment. And what we want to do is find all of the fields that are actually injectable. So we can use the type dot get fields, pass in the binding flags again, and we can say where it is actually defined with the inject attribute. Let's make one more helper method here that will simply resolve something out of our dictionary. So we can do a registry try get value. If we can get something out of it, let's put it into a variable and return that. Otherwise, returns null. Back in our inject method, we can now iterate over all of these injectable fields that we've found. We'll get the type of the field. Next, we'll use our resolve method to actually resolve the instance we want to inject. If our resolve method has returned null for some reason, we should throw an exception. Something has gone wrong and we should figure it out. Otherwise, we can now set the value of our field to be whatever we've got out of our dictionary. And let's put a debug statement in there too so we can check it out. Back here in Unity, we can create new game objects, one to hold class A and one to hold class B. That way we can test them out. Now, class A didn't have any fields that were marked injectable, but class B has two of them, one for service A and one for service B. So let's press play and check it out. So there we go. We've got two new statements at the end of our console log saying that service A has been injected into class B and service B has been also injected into class B. That's a pretty good test, but maybe we should make sure that we can actually use these services that we've injected. Now back here in class B, both of those services have initialized methods that accept a little message. So we could pass in service A initialized from class B, service B initialized from class B. Let's make sure those come out on the console here. Yeah, sure enough, both services have their methods being called correctly. Our system is working great. Let's move on to injecting things into methods that are annotated with the inject attribute. So this time, instead of getting the fields, we are going to get the methods from the type that we've already captured. It's almost exactly the same as the previous method up on line 44. So now we have all the injectable methods. Let's iterate over this collection. And we're going to do something very similar here. Each method that we marked with the inject attribute accepts a parameter that is the type of the dependency that it wants. Let's put all of those into a collection here. Now we can get our resolve helper method to do some double duty here in a link statement. We can get all of the resolved instances that match these parameters. Now, if there was any problem getting one of those out of our registry dictionary, we should throw an exception here. Otherwise, we've resolved all the dependencies that were parameters of that method, and we can pass them in just by invoking it. I'm just going to update these debug statements so we know which ones came from field injection and which ones came from method injection. Now, both class A and class B have method injection. For class A, we're injecting service A. For class B, we're injecting our factory A. 
Now, factory service has a create method on it, so we can create a service and initialize it, and we just say that it came from factory A. So I've recompiled and I'm gonna hit play again. Now we should get everything, all of our injection. So I can see it already, but let's just pull this out here so we can have a closer look at all of the debugging. So now if we walk through the whole thing here, we've registered all of our dependencies. We've injected two things using field injection. We've injected two things using method injection. And then we've called the initialize method on four service instances. Now one of those services came from a factory that we injected. So everything is working the way that we want. Now, uh, what else can we do with this system? One thing we haven't looked at yet is having a mono behavior supply itself as a dependency to register itself. So let's look at that and let's also look at how we can use interfaces to make this even more powerful. Just so we're not using generic names so much, let's make something we'll call it environment system. It's gonna be a mono behavior and it's gonna implement the I dependency provider interface. Now using the provide attribute, we can have a method here that allows it to provide itself as a dependency. I'm gonna move it into its own file. Then we can jump over to class A and we'll make the environment system a dependency of class A and we'll just field inject it here. We can call its initialize method and we should get something out in the console. Now our environment system is a mono behavior. So I'm gonna create a new object for the environment system and add that class onto the object and then we can run and we should see as the last thing in our console our environment system should have been injected into class a and been initialized now let's bring it up on the screen here a little bit bigger and sure enough there it is if i expand it a bit here up at the top we can see field injected environment system into class a and at the very bottom environment system dot initialize was called so that's perfect uh, one more thing, I want to jump back into code for a second and just do a little bit of cleanup. Now, for various reasons, including your own sanity, you might want this class to run before everything else. So you can use the default execution order attribute if you want and just set it to a negative number. You can also configure this in Unity. We also don't need these public constructors in our attributes. So let's get rid of those. Up till now, we've been using concrete implementations of different dependencies uh, in our system. But what we really should be doing is refactoring all of this to interfaces so that we can use different kinds of environment systems. You might want to inject a summer environment system or a winter environment system. In Rider, if you hit Control Shift R, it'll bring up your refactoring window and you can just pull out an interface and then let's change what's being returned in our provide method and what's being accepted by our inject method. That's really all you have to do. Now you can pass any kind of environment system around. Let's run it one more time, just to make sure. So this time our provider has supplied us the interface type and our inject method has accepted the interface type. And you can see it's called the initialize method on that interface. So we've looked at a few different scenarios now. Method injection is particularly useful if you needed to inject a different kind of service at runtime. My challenge to you is to go ahead and try to implement property injection on your own in this system. I hope that building this little injection framework has given you some insights into dependency injection and helps you take a more knowledgeable approach to evaluating some of the more complex frameworks. If you haven't yet, make sure to also check out the video on service locator, which is another method of dependency inversion so that you can compare and contrast these two approaches.